Do you hear? Do you hear? Oh, do you hear that? Do you hear that? They, they, they are supposed to be jingle bells. <laughs> I booked jingle bells. They're not jingle bells. I don't think so. But they're supposed to herald. No. <laughs> oh yes, they're supposed to herald the Christmas show. This is supposed to be a Christmas show for the Tall Thin Idiot Podcast. Oh yes, it is. So I'm going. To, oh, <laughs> I've dropped my bell. <laughs> so this is going. <laughs> this is going to be. A Christmas show, as I am. I'm going to start with a happy Christmas to you all. Happy Christmas to you. Happy Christmas to you. Happy Christmas to you. I've forgotten the rest. Happy Christmas to you. Oh, not a lot of different words in that one. Could I, jingle bells. Hark the herald angels sing. No, we sing happy Christmas to you. Well, happy Christmas to you. All of you. Oh, the legions of one. I don't care. Happy Christmas to you all. Wherever you are, happy Christmas. And now, in the words of Ethel Merman, it's on with the show! <laughs> what will probably follow now is a huge pause <laughs> before the action actually starts. Because, ah, you think that's probably an artistic pause. No, no it isn't. It's because I actually buggered up the recording and I can't work out the edit, so I can't get the gap out. So, <laughs> bear with me. It's still there. It's still there. Never mind. So, enjoy it. Enjoy it. I'll speak to you later. Hello, hello, and welcome, 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 welcome to series two. Yes, series two. <laughs> Stop groaning. Thinking, oh God, we thought that horrible thing had gone, but no, it has returned. Series two of the Tall Thin it Podcast with your host, that's moi, Kevin Green. Ah, now it's back. It's back. But this time, this time, we are going to try. We've got. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to try some different things. Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. Now, the first one, the first thing we're going to try, the first thing we're going to try, is we're going to have a a, a, a story thing, a story time thing. Um, it's going to be set in a classroom um, with lots of lovely children, lots of lovely, well-behaved children. That'll be fun. <laughs> Although they won't be well-behaved, no. Mm. Now, it's set in a, in a classroom, in, in a school, therefore, um, now what normally happens, I will be the teacher, and what normally happens is we have, we have a lovely lady comes in and reads the children a lovely story. Yes, wouldn't that be nice? And the lady's name, who comes in and reads the children, the story, is Mrs Slack. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Mrs Slack has been taken rather unwell. I think she's pissed. Mm, too much gin. Yes, but we don't talk about that. We don't. We don't. Don't talk about the, the, the obvious pissage. No, we don't talk about that. No, 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 no. So, so children, it's going to be me, reading you a lovely story. Stop groaning. You know you love me reading your stories. Yes, you do. You do. That's enough. Right, sort yourselves out. Yes, 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 settle down, settle down. Right, we're going to read a lovely, lovely book. There, there this one is a lovely book. It's called Timbo and Mopsy. Isn't that nice? Yes, it is. Yes, it is nice. No, no, we're not having anything violent. We're having this. You will enjoy it. Yes, you will. Right, here we go. We'll make a start. Ah, ah, look at that. It starts off with a letter from Timbo. Isn't that nice? Ah, it is nice. Yes, you wait. It says, hello, children. Ah, I do think it's fun to have a book of my own, don't you? I know someone who's got a book of his own. Ah, (laughs) oh, yes, he's going to have more than one. Ah, it's been very successful. I haven't got a book. Oh, no. Who knows? Maybe one day. Could do. Oh, sorry. Distracted. Right. Go back to the letter. And it says, I've been looking through the pages of my book. And I think I look very nice in the pictures. Ah. If you colour me with your crayon, don't you dare colour me with your crayons. Put that crayon down. I'm looking at you, small piece. (laughs) Yes. It says, now we've agreed, no crayoning. It says, don't forget to give me blue eyes, not green. But no crayoning. OK. I do a lot of naughty things in this book. I know you do, don't you, children? <laughs> ha 
Yes, you do. But mistress said she wouldn't... Bo- mistress! <laughs> Get that? Mistress said she wouldn't part with me, even if I were twice as bad. Ah, oh, she must love me very much, mustn't she? Ah, oh, she must love me. Ah, oh, one day, one day, I will against the love. <laughs> one day... Oh, shut up, you sad old fool. Um... Ah, uh, I am sharing it with Mopsy, the puppy. Ah, uh, and she will write you a letter at the end. Ah, uh, and then she signs it with a hundred purrs from Timbo. And look, look, children, there's a picture of Timbo. And, and Timbo's looking a bit weird because Timbo looks very humanoid. And and there's all sorts of questions raised by this picture. If you can see, uh, Timbo is holding a letter. Hmm, how, <laughs> didn't realise cats had opposable thumbs, but there we are. And he's written it. How's he held the pen? <laughs> anyway, anyway, on to the first chapter. This is chapter one. The new little kitten. Isn't that lovely? Mm. One day, a little kitten arrived in a basket at a house called Green Hedges. Ah, well, well, well. Lack of imagination. There I feel. Mm. What else could they have called it? I don't know. Red door. Yes, anything like that. But green hedges. Oh, dear. Done managing. Done roaming. That's always fun, isn't it? Green hedges. Oh. He was a present for two little girls there. And how they squealed with joy to see him. Well, they're going to get a slap. Stop that noise. Oh. He's not a bit like an ordinary cat, said Gillian. Gillian? Ah. He's creamy white. And he's got a chocolate brown nose. Ears, feet and tail. Well, it's just as well he's got ears, feet and tail, isn't it? It'd be a bit weird if you were dragging round a torso. <laughs> just a torso. Dragging a furry sausage around the garden. There's an image. And do look at his eyes, said Imogen. They are bright blue like the sea on a summer's day. Or they ran here. We have areas where it's not bright blue at all. Oh, no. It's very brown and foamy. And there are things in it. Things floating. You know what I mean. So we we looked at the kitten's eyes. The kitten looked up at the two little girls with his brilliant blue eyes, not brown or foamy, with things floating. Oh, no. And then jumped out of the basket. Meow! He said. He said, of course, I'm not like an ordinary cat. Well, no, obviously not. For a start, he's actually speaking. Ah, hmm. I'm a Siamese cat, didn't you know? Ah, he's saying this. And how are they understanding it? That's what I'd like to know. We are always brown and cream. Well, actually, they're not. They're not always brown and cream. Not at all. Because we, at one stage, had five cats of the Siamese variety. We did indeed. And they were orange Orange, orange and cream, and tabby and cream. Not always brown and cream, so that's wrong. (laughs) But our eyes are always blue. Mm. I've come to live with you. Ah, he jumped up onto Gillian's lap. I haven't a name, he mewed. (laughs) Did that sound like... I haven't a name, he mewed. (laughs) You must give me one. Mm. Mm. How can I come when I'm called if I haven't got a name? We can't call you silly. If you haven't got a name, said Gillian. Imogen, what shall we call him? <sighs> Brace yourselves. Patty paws, said Imogen. Oh, God. With the brain cell over- overloading itself there. No, that's too long, said Gillian. What about whiskers? Whiskers, whiskers. All the cats in the garden would come if he called Whiskers, Whiskers. Whiskers, Whiskers, said Imogen, because they've all got whiskers. Yes, yes, they may all have whiskers, but they're not all called Whiskers, are they? Honestly, children, the children in this book are basically thick. Well, let's call him Timbo then, said Gillian. Mummy once had a cat she loved called Timbo. But unfortunately, he was flattened by a bus. <laughs> no, 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 he, he wasn't. Don't cry, children. Don't, don't cry. It's just a story. It's just a story. Flat as a pancake. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is a cat we shall love, so we shall call him Timbo. 
Ah, uh, isn't that nice? That's a nice name, said Imogen. I shall like calling that. I shall often stand in the garden and call Tim, 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 Timbo, like an imbecile. Do you like that name, Timbo, said Gillian, as she stroked the creamy coat of the new little kitten. He nibbled at her fingers. What else was that she doing? was trying to rip her fingers clean off by ramming those huge canines into her fingers. <laughs> you see, that's the, t- that's the tiger. That's the tiger in them. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, children. No, they're not all tigers. Don't be frightened of them. They're just pussies. Mind you, <laughs> I've been frightened of a pussy before. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, back to the story. Meow! Yes, that's the nice name for a cat like me. I'm glad I've got a name. Now I feel real. Ah! Oh, hang on. That's a Sylvester song. You make me feel mighty real. Oh, ah, distracted, distracted. You don't feel real if you haven't got a name. How? Oh, that's so deep. That's so deep. That's very zen. That's very, oh, philosophical. Oh, God. Well, all right, children. Calm down. I, I shall explain zen and philosophy. Take me about ten minutes. No, nothing to it. Nothing to it. <laughs> Back to the story. Let me, oh, I've got my pages stacked together. Hang on. How often has that happened? Let me go into the corner over there and hide. Then you call me and I'll come. I shall feel a real proper cat then. <laughs> oh, he jumped off Gillian's knee and ran to the corner. He hid under a chair and waited. The two children called him loudly. Tim, Tim, Timbo! Tim, Tim, Timbo! Meow, said Timbo, and sprang out of the corner at once. I'm here! I'm queer! No, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. I'm Timbo. And that is how Timbo came to the nursery and got his name. Ah. He soon settled down there and grew to know everyone in the house. I don't know everyone in my house. No, no. People come and go. I get up in the morning. Who is that in the kitchen? Oh, God, who are you? And put some clothes on. Oh, for God's sake. It's like looking at a butcher shop. <laughs> How many chipolages to get to the pound? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> looking at that one. <clears throat> uh-huh. Sorry, sorry. Back to the story. Yes, where did we get to? Oh, he knew, got to know everyone in the house. There was knobs. <laughs> a black fox terrier. Ah, uh, a kindly dog who didn't seem to mind if Timbo jumped out to frighten him. Well, he didn't seem to mind, no. What he was actually imagining was having the little beast staked out in the garden with his skin flayed off, with honey on him and ants. (laughs) Perhaps not. Perhaps that's just me. (laughs) There was Rosie, a fat tabby, two years old, who smacked Bimbo when he was rude to her. Ah, do you know any fat tabbies? I know some fat pussies. I know a couple of very fat pussies. Do you? They're fun, aren't they? Mm. Who else was in the garden? Oh, yes, there were the white pigeons in the garden that Gillian said Timbo was never to touch. Don't touch those pigeons. Oh, and there were the grey doves who said, oh, 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 oh. oh, no, they said, Ah, hang on. All day long. That was, I mean, God, the doves could have been in the room there. (laughs) Nobs went out for walks with the children. Timbo wanted to go too, but Gillian said, No! No! You will be frightened of the motor cars. And the dogs would chase you. Oh, no, they wouldn't, said Timbo. Nobs doesn't chase me. Have you ever been chased by a knob? <laughs> it's quite an experience. <laughs> and he's a dog. As for motor cars, I don't even know what they are. But I'm sure I wouldn't be afraid of them, if you don't mind them, Gillian. No, you mustn't come. God, she's a bossy cow, isn't she? No, you mustn't come. You, oh, you, mu- you must get back in your cupboard. Oh. So they went off with Nobs trotting beside them. How often do do you get knobs trotting beside you? Hmm, Interesting image, isn't it? I will go. I will, thought Timbo. And he ran to the hedge that grew round the front garden. I am not afraid of dogs or of motor cars, but as he doesn't even know what a motor car is, that's a bit stupid, isn't it, children? Stupid. Yes, he's obviously stupid. He'll, He'll join them. How surprised they'll be. Oh, yes. So... 
when Nobs and the children came by on the pavement near the hedge, Timbo crept out and ran behind them. Uh, he pad, 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 his feet went. Nobs turned round and looked at him. Roar a naughty kitten, said Nobs. Go home. I shan't, said Timbo. I want to go for a walk. I'm a big kitten now. <laughs> He's going to become a very big pussy. <laughs> Just then, a motor car raced by. Oh, frightened, bored. Timbo, oh, what's that enormous thing, he said. How often have you said that? What's that enormous thing? Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> oh, again, how often have you said that? What's that enormous thing? Take it away. I don't like it. <laughs> nobs, nobs, will it eat me? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second there. Got to completely get rid of it. <laughs> Timbo, that's only a car hooting, said Nobs. Oh, God, there's another one, cried Timbo. Suppose it comes on the pavement and gobbles me. Mm. <laughs> oh, dear, there's a wish for thought. <laughs> Suppose it does. <laughs> oh, Nobs, I know those big things will eat me for their dinner. No, they wouldn't, said Nobs. Don't be so stupid, you imbecile. Well, maybe they didn't say that. God, she'll such a fuckwit. <laughs> Suddenly a dog came by. I was most surprised to see a, a little kitten out for a walk. Woof! He barked. Oh, run, kitten, run. I'm going to come after you and I'm going to eat you. <laughs> now, don't actually say eat you, children. Don't be frightened. Don't be too frightened, anyway. <laughs> Oh, no, mm, you're not too, mewed Timbo. Oh, what that, meow, 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 mewed Timbo. And he ran between Nob's legs. How often have you ran between Nob's legs? I know I have. <laughs> save me, Nob's, save me, <laughs> save me, Nob's, save me. Oh, God, you're tripping me up, cried Nob's and fell down on the pavement. Uh, the children look round, see what all the fuss was, all the furore, all the carrying on. Oh, and they were surprised to see naughty Timbo rushing away with his little brown legs, rushing as fast as he could with a dog after him. Oh, where's the guy? I'm lost, said Timbo. Oh, I've, I can't see where I am. I must climb a tree. See, that's what I do. <laughs> Whenever I'm lost, climb a tree. See where you are. I do it regularly. Did it in the car park the other day. Climbed a tree. <laughs> oh, felt very silly hanging from the tree. Never mind. I could see where I was. Yes, I was up a tree. <laughs> oh. Up a tree went went the kitten. The dog was at the foot, his tongue hanging out. Oh, wait till you come down, he said. You're good to chase. Probably good to taste as well. <laughs> you look like a tasty pussy. <laughs> um, excuse me. Ah, so there poor old Timber had to stay until the children came back from their walk and saw him. Oh, look! There's poor Timber up a tree! Oh, go away, dog! You bastard! said Gillian. <laughs> Timbo, jump onto my shoulder! Ah. Timbo jumped down safely onto Gillian's soldier. The dog ran away. Not far, though. I'll have you. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll have you. I'll be chewing on you soon, you pussy. <laughs> and then we'll have another go. But Timbo has had enough of going for walks. You can go out each day for a walk, knobs, he said. So can the children, but I shan't. Walks are dangerous for little kittens like me. Well, isn't that exactly what I told you, said Nobs. You just be sensible or I'll chase you myself. Ah, uh, and that, children, is the end of the first chapter. Ah, uh, did you enjoy it? Did you? Ah, uh, isn't that lovely? Uh, I'm sure Mrs Slack will be back. I mean, once she's been released by the police. Oh, no. <laughs> she hasn't been released. No, no, no. She's just feeling very unwell. All right, children. Settle down. Right. 
Take care, right? I'll speak to you soon and I'll see you next week. All right? Or, or Mrs. Slack will see you next week. Or somebody will see you next week. I don't know. Probably. Who knows? Anyway, take care. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. This has been the Tall Thin Idiots Christmas podcast for 2020 at the end of a totally shit year. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, happy Christmas to you all. And um, thank you, Delectable Daily, for the sweeties. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say we've eaten them. <laughs> I have no teeth left in my head. Not one. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for the sweeties. And all the cards, thank you very much, everybody. Happy, happy Christmas to you. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.